took a lot of photos in 2014, and in this episode of Micromatic, I want to show you my top 50. Happy New Year! But before I get too far ahead of myself, I wanted to take a minute and savor the year that was 2014. I took a lot of photos in the last year, some of them not so good, but some of them I was actually pretty happy with. Uh, in this video, I wanted to share with you my 50 favorites from 2014. And to keep this interesting for you guys, I'm going to talk a little bit about what went on behind the camera uh, in some instances, and I'm also going to tell you which lens I used for each of the photographs. Uh, if, in case it's not totally clear, all the photos that you're going to see were taken with my Micro Four Thirds cameras. Um, I had three different cameras throughout the year that I used. Um, one is an Olympus Pen EP5, one is an Olympus Pen EPM2, uh, and at the beginning of the year I still had a Panasonic GF3. So to decide this top 50 photos of 2014, what I did is I went into Flickr, I created a new album, I titled it 2014, you can see, and I just started throwing in some of my favorite photos that I had taken. Uh, and I ended up with quite a few photos, but what I wanted to do for this video specifically was to whittle it down to my top 50. And so you can see there are only 50 left, uh, and th those are these photos. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through them one by one, tell you maybe a little bit of the story behind that photo, uh, and I will tell you which lens I use for that photo to give you an idea, too, of, of what kinds of images you, you can get with these different lenses. It'll also give you an idea of kind of my lens preferences. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start here. This is toward the beginning of the year. Uh, this is a photo of my nephew. Um, I took this with the Fujian 35 millimeter lens. It's this little guy right here. Uh, we went out bowling. This is actually somewhere pretty close to my house. Um, and you know, this is a manual focus lens shooting pictures of kids. Not necessarily the best for it, uh, but I, you can see this photo actually does a pretty good job of showing you the character that the Fujian give that that Fujian gives an image, right? It's just kind of nice bokeh. It's almost kind of like a creamy liquid quality to it. Uh, it's what I really like about this lens. So now this photo is naturally of a surfer and a wave. Uh, this was shot at Rockaway Beach in Pacifica, California. Um, I live nearby, so it's, it's a place I'm, you know, walking around photographing kind of all the time. Uh, and this particular shot was with the Olympus 40 to 150 millimeter zoom lens. Uh, it's the only zoom lens I have, uh, and as you'll see, even though it's a very flexible zoom range, obviously, I actually don't end up using it that much just because I like my prime so much. But yeah, this photo, I, I, I really like the way that the colors of the waves came out. This might have been taken right around the time um, that Mavericks uh, was going on um, every year in the Bay Area there's a big surf competition called Mavericks. It's like when the waves just get ridiculous in this area. Um, and so this obviously is not the hugest wave, but I, I, I quite like the photo. Now this shot is in the parking garage of my office. It is a car and a bicycle, and maybe not that interesting to most people, but there was something about this photo that I, I just really liked the composition of it, the lighting of it. And I think what is really special to me about this photo is that this is the photo that made me realize that the 35 millimeter focal length of Micro Four Thirds cameras is kind of my perfect focal length. This was shot with the Fujian 35 mil, uh, the same one I was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, and this was the, the shot that made me realize I love this focal length so much. What happened was I was just, I was going from my motorcycle to the elevator to go into the office and I saw this you know, car parked up here. I was like, that looks great. I'm gonna pull up my camera and take a picture. And what was framed was exactly what I had pre-visualized. Um, it, was, it was perfect. It was exactly as I saw the image before I actually pulled the camera up. And that was what made me think, all right, that's it. I need, I need to use the 35 millimeter focal length more often. Uh, this is gonna be a recurring theme here at the beginning of this video as the Fujian was very popular with me uh, at the beginning of the year, but this shot was also with the Fujian 35 millimeter lens. Um, it's maybe not totally clear in this photo, uh, but I was actually inside a little cave. Uh, this is actually on the same beach that the surf shot was in. It's on Rockaway Beach. Um, and like the, the north end of the beach, you just kind of have to hop over a little flowing river. Um, and there is, nestled behind some of the rocks, a small cave that you can get into. Um, and 35 millimeter focal length, a little, it's a little long for this shot, right? I actually have a similar shot. Actually, it's not similar at all. It's the same, it's a shot in the same position, but with a fisheye lens 
that gives you a better sense of being in, of what it's like inside that little cave. Uh, but I, there was something about just the way that it framed the waves that I, I quite liked about this photo. Oh, hey, here's another Fujian 35 millimeter shot. Um, this one is in my office. This is one of my coworkers. Uh, we got Google Glass in the office uh, at the beginning of the year, and it was you know a novelty. We were all playing around with it, testing it out. And again, this is just kind of the kind of shot that really shows why I like this lens so much. Uh, it's not the super sharpest. If you zoom into the details, you know, it's not super sharp. Um, but look at the bokeh. The quality of it is just, again, it's almost got a, a liquid quality to it. Uh, and I really, really like that. All right, so here we have a shot that I took with the Rokinon 7.5 millimeter fisheye lens. Um, this is actually a lens I ended up selling earlier this year because I just wasn't using it that much. But every once in a while, I did get a photo like this that I quite like. This is a sort of photo that you can't really get without a really, really wide angle of view. And naturally, a fisheye will give you that. Um, this was on a little hiking excursion I went on with some coworkers. Uh, these two trees were kind of coming out of the side of uh, a, a little forest wall. And the way that they were so close together and there was almost like this kind of uh, spinning motion to them. You know, I just kind of put my camera right in between the, the, the two trunks, pointed out, and shot the picture, and I quite liked it. So now this is the first uh, of, of many that you will see uh, of my shots that I shot with the Olympus 45 millimeter lens. Is this bad boy. Um, this is on the, this is in Pacifica on the beach, uh, heading up toward the pier. Um, and there are a lot of ravens in the area. Um, the ravens, they look cool, and on cloudy days like this, they look especially ominous. I think the comment I posted on, uh, when I posted this on Instagram was something like, winter is coming, because it's just kind of like a dark, ominous photo. Uh, but I really liked, you know, the, the detail and the sharpness that I got in the raven's face. Uh, the the out-of-focus background looks really, really cool. Um, yeah, it's just one of those photos I like. The ravens are just kind of always an interesting subject for me to photograph. They're just kind of a pain in the butt to photograph, except for this one. This raven, who I call George, uh, was surprisingly, uh, he's just surprisingly willing to let me get pretty close to him. This photo was shot with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Um, that is the lens, basically I told you that the Fujian made me realize that 35 mil is just perfect for me. And so what I wanted to do was get a lens that approximated that same focal length, but was maybe a little bit sharper, right? It didn't have uh, maybe not the, the quality or the, the character of the Fujian, but also not the downsides of the Fujian. And so I ended up on this Olympus 38 mil lens. Uh, and this is one of the first shots that I got with it. Instantly, you know, validated why I bought it. Cause you can see the detail in this, this Raven is just, it's kind of unreal. Uh, it's kind of cool. You can, you can identify George if you're in the area because he has a broken top half of his beak. I actually haven't seen him since this photo, uh, or at least I had, don't think that I have, and I certainly haven't dealt with any more ravens that are this willing to, to let me photograph them up close. Uh, this is another photo shot with the Olympus 38 millimeter uh, old Pen F lens. Again, uh, if I think I've talked about it in another video, but this lens that I'm using, the Olympus 38 mil, it's a, a, a lens made for a very, very old camera system. It's not made for micro four thirds, but I've adapted it to work on my cameras. Uh, the lens itself is actually about 50 years old, which I find cool. Uh, and just the way that the colors and detail comes through on it, this, this shot right here kind of highlights why I love this lens so much. Um, this was just a sunset uh, in Pacifica. Um, I don't know, as far as sunsets go, I, a lot of sunset shots just tend to look fantastic. Sunset is one of the best things to photograph, uh, but this one, I like the way that the birds were coming across it. I really like the contrails in the sky, how they create kind of this, I don't know, contrast of, of human, uh, I don't know, human messing up nature, but it still looks beautiful, right? Um, so that's what, why I really like that photo. So now here's another shot of my nephew. This is the same nephew I shot uh, while bowling. And this was taken with the Olympus 45 millimeter lens. Um, he doesn't have a Nintendo 3DS of his own, 
So when he comes over to visit, he likes to play the 3DS. Uh, and as you can see from that look in his eyes, he's got the stare of a champion. He's got the stare of a, of a kid who is addicted to video games, even though he doesn't have them. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I really like this portrait. Actually, it's worth pointing out, um, when, when he came up, he came up, I think, with his grandmother and not his parents. And his parents told me uh, while he was here, they really wanted to get a black and white portrait of their son. And so I ended up basically devoting that couple of days that they were in town to getting a nice black and white photo. Uh, this is my favorite of the bunch. Here's another shot with the Olympus 45 millimeter lens. Again, this is on Rockaway Beach, the same one with the surfer and the same beach with that cave. Um, this is the fisherman throwing his lure out into the water. Uh, a lot of people do some offshore fishing. There's a lot of crab fishing in the area. I have no idea what this guy was trying to get, but uh, I just really like the way that this shot turned out with the square, uh, the square format. Usually when I post things to Instagram, I try, I don't, I usually keep the original aspect ratio and that's usually either four by three or three by two. Um, but this shot in particular, I actually thought worked quite well with the the one by one square aspect ratio what i really liked about the shot was one i liked how i cop captured this guy just putting all his weight and might into this cast but also it, it made the the ocean feel i don't know almost like cartoonishly big it's like this is a little man against the ocean uh, and i don't know it's a little a, a little theme to the photo that made me like it quite a bit uh, here's another shot with the Olympus 45 mil. Sorry if I, this is getting repetitive, but uh, you're going to find that the 45 mil is definitely one of my most used lenses. Um, I did a review of that lens earlier too. I think I mentioned probably the exact same thing that I love this lens. And this photo is kind of an example of why. Uh, this photo was shot, if you're from San Francisco, you might recognize it. Uh, this photo was shot in Golden Gate Park at the west end of the park there are a couple of these windmills, Dutch windmills, I think is what they call them. Um, and my wife and I went to, we went to the park for something. I think we were going for archery uh, and we hung out a little bit and we were checking out these windmills. Um, I like the way that this photo came through behind the, the, you know, the, the backlit trees. So you just kind of see their silhouettes and then the lighting right on the Dutch windmill. So now here is another photo with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Um, just to reiterate, this is a manual focus lens. So getting a shot like this where you have a bird uh, and I get the focus right on its eye is a testament to how easy it is to manually focus lenses on these mirrorless cameras. Uh, if you haven't done it yourself, check out a video I did earlier this year, or I guess it was earlier last year. Man, it's 2015. That's right. That's why I'm doing this video. Anyway, check out that video for some tips on manual focus. Uh, this is kind of an example of what you can do with those tips. Um, this is a photo in Pacifica. Uh, this is the, the underside of the pier. Um, and there is a little area where these little pigeons kind of nestle in. Um, I liked how, well, one, I like the color, like the rusty color uh, of these rocks and metal. Um, I like the focus on the bird that I got. And there's something about this little wing peeking out there that I really like too. Here's another photo with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about this photo. I just, I really, really like it. Uh, it might not come across here in the video, but you'll see the, the full version in a sec. Um, what I really like about this photo, one is the composition turned out quite nice. It's a sunset, which again, I said, sunsets almost always look pretty, uh, but I like that it has that extra touch of the park bench. It kind of gives you a mood and then uh, again, the, the composition of it just worked out quite well with the really, really dark clouds about to cover up the sun and the sun breaking through. Here's another shot with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. And I'll be honest, I think this is, uh, this photo is not necessarily um, most people's favorite. For me, it's my favorite for a couple of reasons. One, I like the composition of the path going into the background and it's kind of mirrored almost like almost in reverse uh, the clouds in the sky um, but what I really like about this photo is the color and the tonality that comes through and again this is what's this is down to that Olympus 38 millimeter lens 
the light that comes through it is just, it's got this kind of, I don't know, it's like a warm, soft, fuzzy character to it. It's not like the photo soft, but there's a character to the color that comes through it that just makes me feel good. And this, this photo right here is uh, indicative of that. This is my wife here walking in the corner. It kind of gives a, it, you know, without her in there, it's a, an, a decent photo, but having sort of those two converging lines pointing to her, I ended up with a, a, a photo that I'm quite happy with. Uh, this is also in Pacifica, and this is shot with the Olympus 12 millimeter lens. This is one of the first shots I took with this lens. Let's see if I can show it to you real quick. Boom, that's Olympus 12. Um, most of my lenses, most of the shots you've been seeing, right, are quasi telephoto, not super telephoto, but they're not wide angle lenses. The, the 12 millimeter was the first wide angle lens I got, and this is one of the first shots I got with it that basically said, you know, all my shots were long. I, I didn't know if I knew how to shoot wide. And to be frank, I still struggle with it. But when I got this shot, I was like, okay, I can do wide angle. I can learn how to make it work. Um, this shot is, I think I mentioned in Pacifica, it's uh, at Mori Point, which is an area that I'm at quite often. A lot of my photos are from Mori Point. Um, just a lot of really cool trails by the ocean. Um, this trail, you know, traces the edge of this mountain that actually gets a little precarious over here, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, if you're in the area, you should check it out. Here's another shot uh, at Mori Point, actually, and this one was with the Olympus Pen F 38 millimeter lens. Um, this photo shows off, well, a couple of things. One, the lighting is just gorgeous at Mori Point at, uh, you know, golden hour, which is, you know, somewhere around an hour before sunset. And this is the kind of light that you get where it's just, it's soft, the color is perfect. Uh, this lens, you know, I can show you, this is how sharp it gets, uh, but it allows the out of focus bits to, to look quite nice. And a side effect of this lens, which sometimes, honestly, it's kind of annoying, uh, is that it tends to flare. And I think you might've seen that too in the shot of the park bench with the sunset behind it, is there's lens flare. Um, and sometimes it's a problem with that lens in particular, but sometimes, like in this case, I actually quite like the effect that it gives. You know, that wasn't intentional. I shot a couple of shots of this same exact scene where I changed the, I think I turned the aperture down a little bit uh, and it ended up getting rid of this. But I, you know, I, I was looking at it and as I was editing the photos, I was like, you know what? I, I know this is a flaw, but I actually think that it adds to the photo. And so that's the one that I kept. Here's another shot uh, at Mori Point in Pacifica. Uh, this one is with the 40 to 150 millimeter zoom lens. Um, this is my wife sitting on a park bench. In fact, it's the same park bench that I shot with the sunset behind it. Um, this is just obviously a different angle. Uh, and what I really liked about this one is I like the composition. I don't really like that the, the sky is just kind of blown out white. It was probably a cloudy day um, and there's just not much you're gonna get there. Uh, but what I like is the way that the, the, the super telephoto lens, the super telephoto focal length compresses all these different layers of the image, right? So you've got super, super foreground, you've got medium foreground, you've got the subject, and it all kind of looks like it's right next to each other because it's what telephoto lenses do, uh, but you know, it, it obviously creates different focus, right? So this is out of focus, this is in focus. Uh, and that's why I like this photo. This is shot with the Olympus 45 millimeter lens. This is in downtown San Francisco. I shot this just while walking to lunch one day. Um, and there's a lot of construction going on. You can see this is obviously new construction going on, but in the background, there is this very classic looking architecture. Um, and the 45 mil, not necessarily the lens you think of when you're, when you're shooting architecture. Uh, but in this case, it worked out quite well. The detail obviously is what you get. Uh, and, you know, I originally shot it in color uh, when I was playing around with the, the editing. I liked it in black and white because it just kind of, um, it emphasized the, the, the rigid lines of the photograph. Now this was shot with the Olympus 25 millimeter lens, which I just reviewed. If you haven't seen that review, check it out. Um, this is an example of how this lens can be done, can be used for anything. Um, this shot is at the Pigeon Point Lighthouse, 
Uh, it's here in Northern California along the coast, just off Highway 1. It's a really cool lighthouse. Um, I think I took this photo on my way back from Santa Cruz, but I th you'll also see another shot of this same lighthouse on a later trip. Um, I just really like the color. Uh, the, the sky is particularly interesting in this photo in that I used a polarizing filter, which I don't use often enough because every time I, I'm out photographing in the bright daylight, and this is a very bright day, just you, you end up with contrast, like the sky is too bright, um, things that are directly lit kind of will look really harsh. Uh, and just a lot of times I get discouraged photographing in bright sunlight. But the polarizing filter though, that's what allows me to get this really you know, darker sky and it just makes it a lot more striking a photo. Um, that's why I should really be using that polarizer a lot more often. Here's another shot with the Olympus 25 mil. Uh, this is my motorcycle. It's a Triumph Street Triple, if you care. If you don't care, uh, I can't take that back. You now know that it's a Triumph Street Triple. Um, and this photo is shot on Highway 9 here in Northern California. It goes through the, the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's one of the top roads in the area, uh, if you're a motorcyclist. Um, but I really liked, yeah, I just like the composition of it. I like the color of the trees. And then you can just see how sharp, sharp, sharp this lens can be. Another photo of my motorcycle. I think there might be one, one or I, th I don't know. This might be the only one. I take a lot of photos of my motorcycle. Um, for that, I apologize. This one was shot with the Olympus 75 millimeter lens. So this was probably taken basically right after I got that lens. Uh, and what's cool about this lens is that you can do a shot like this where it's, you know, a portrait of a motorcycle, right? But imagine that's a portrait of a human. You can get a full body shot and still with that focal length blur out the background. And so that's, I think, part of why people really like this lens. The other part is that it's just, it's just ridiculously sharp. The detail is fantastic. So here's another shot with my Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Um, again, manual focus. Uh, and again, this is the sort of photo that, it's not the sort of photo that got, you know, the most likes on Instagram. It's not maybe everyone's favorite, but for me, what I really like about the lens, one is I like, or the photo, one, I really like the color. Um, this was right around golden hour, so you can see that the, the lighting came through. Oh, it's time to take out the trash, thank you. It's right around golden hour, so the, the lighting is just beautiful. Um, but what I really like, and this might not come across here, but if you wanna see it in full detail, check out my Flickr page. It's just how much detail comes through this lens. It is, it's kind of crazy that this lens is 50 years old and it was able to pull out this detail uh, to my Micro Four Thirds cameras. I love it, I love it. Uh, this is my dad riding a motorcycle like a hooligan, just driving through a pile of trash. Um, this is shot with the Olympus 75 millimeter lens. Uh, the bike in front of it is actually my little brother's bike. Um, I don't know, this is, this is a good trip during the summer, hanging out with my dad and my brother, goofing around on motorcycles around the house. Um, it's just a lot of fun, and uh, I like that I, I was able to snap this shot. Uh, basically, a, a half a second before this shot, he was behind this pile of trash on the bottom of the hill, and so it was just him pop up, popping up, locking focus super quick and you know because these cameras are so quick that's what makes that possible and this is a photo of my little brother and that's his bike this is him um, he's wearing a shirt that says i experiment uh, this photo was shot with the olympus 12 millimeter lens um, and i just you know i i think this was edited a little bit in Snapseed, and then it's got a, a, a slight filter effect that was applied with Visco Cam. I just kind of like the character that it gave to it. Um, I don't know. It's maybe I don't like this photo more because I like my brother. Uh, maybe it's a really good photo. I can't differentiate. And this is my dad's motorcycle. This was shot with the Olympus 75 mil. Um, this motorcycle is. Let's see, I think it's a 1976 or something. It's a Yamaha TT. Um, if you're a motorcycle fan, you might know more about it than I do. I love motorcycles, but I don't know anything about old bikes. Um, but yeah, it's a cool bike. Uh, it looks great in his neighborhood. This is a squirrel. 
using Pacifica. This was shot with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Uh, and again, this is, you know, a, a testament to what you can do with manual focus on these cameras. You know, you wouldn't think that uh, a squirrel that's twitching around is necessarily the ideal subject for these cameras, but it works out. Um, I just, I really like just how sharp the detail is around his eye. Um, and then I like the way that it falls off. I think this was shot at f2.8, so it wasn't even wide open. Um, and you still get that nice bokeh. Here's another shot of an animal. This is a snake. If you couldn't tell, you can tell, you can tell. I bet, I bet you know that was a snake. Uh, this is a snake shot. Uh, this is in Pacifica as well. Uh, this is also with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Um, and this is a garter snake. Uh, in the area, there are actually some signs talking about endangered garter snakes. I don't know if this is one of those endangered snakes because there are other garter snakes that are not endangered. Um, but what made me think that it might be is the bright blue striping that this thing, that this snake has along its edges. Um, this is really cool. This is a candidate for my favorite photo of the year. This was shot with the Olympus 75 mil. Uh, that bridge that you see here in the background is the San Francisco Bay Bridge. Um, and this photo was shot on Treasure Island in September, I think it was. I went out with a couple of, uh, a couple of buddies that are also into micro four thirds photography. And we went out there with our cameras uh, to Treasure Island and we just we, you know, basically waited for the sun to set uh, and take photos of the city. But I actually got my favorite photos just before the sun set. And this is one of them. This is actually shot the same day as that last photo, uh, but in a completely different area. This is that lighthouse I was talking about before, Pigeon Point Lighthouse. Uh, this was shot with the Olympus 75 mil lens. Um, and what I like about this shot, number of things. I think I shot this with the polarizing filter, which, you know, again, it was a bright day, but it still let me get the detail of the lighthouse without the sky being totally blown out. What I really like about this photo is the detail um, you can see these little pigeons just kind of hanging out. You, you can imagine they're there all the time. Um, and just the detail, the, the rust of the lighthouse, uh, and then the, the, the square on composition makes me like that photo. So now we're back in Pacifica. Um, this is again the pier that I've mentioned a number of times before. Um, this was shot with the Olympus 38 mil lens. Uh, again, the manual focus. Um, you would think that something, some still architecture like this might not be a challenge for manual focus, but what you don't realize is that it's high tide. Well, I guess it was low tide, but becoming high tide uh, and the waves were crashing in. And so uh, basically I was running in and out from underneath the pier to get this photo. Uh, basically the waves would kind of pull out, I would rush in, set up my shot, get focused, take a shot, then run out before the waves came out. Uh, it took, I don't know, probably a good half a dozen shots or more, but I ended up with this one I'm quite happy with. The focus is perfect. I got the waves splashing against uh, the, the posts. Um, and I, this again is another candidate for my favorite photo of the year. This was also shot at the Pacific Pier. Uh, this was with the Olympus 75 millimeter lens. This is a seagull. There are a lot of seagulls in the area and they're kind of dirty, gross birds. Um, if you don't live near the ocean, maybe a seagull looks really cool to you. If you do live near the ocean, you kind of know that seagulls are scavengers, but we'll give this guy a pass because he ended up being a pretty attractive subject for a photo. Uh, I just really like the detail that came through in this and the way that the background just absolutely melts off into the distance. Now this photo is Mount Shasta in Northern California. Uh, it's very far in Northern California, just off of I-5 if you're traveling in the area. It's a beautiful mountain, um, snow-capped when we're in drought, which is beautiful. Uh, and this was actually on a trip with me and my wife heading up to Seattle. We were just driving straight up I-5. Um, and this is one of the few attractive things that you'll see on I-5. Um, for this photo, I pulled off uh, and I used the Olympus 45 millimeter lens. Uh, you can see the detail that came through is staggering. Um, the, the way that the, the weeds in the foreground blur out, I really liked. And I think, I'm pretty sure for this, I also used a polarizing filter, 
which is why the sky didn't get super blown out. It looks, you know, nice and dark and it contrasts quite well with the bright snow-capped mountain. So this is on the same trip. Uh, this is actually on the Oregon coast. Uh, this is in a town called Brookings, I believe. We stayed at an Airbnb um, and didn't really expect this, but just outside the back of the Airbnb was this long set of stairs. It was like 90 plus steps that went down to this really cool tide pool area. Um, and then when we got there, it happened to be really foggy. You can kind of see the fog pouring in over here. The tide pool was like foggy and dark and a little seaweedy and smelly, but it was just, it was perfect for photographs. Um, this, like, I think I mentioned, maybe I didn't mention, was shot with the Olympus 12 mil lens. Um, this is the kind of shot that you really need a wide angle lens for. Um, and in case it's not totally coming across the distance between me and the bottom of these stairs, check this out. That's my wife waving to me way at the bottom of the stairs. Again, that's 90 plus stairs down to the bottom. Um, but yeah, 12 mil lens, that's exactly what I needed for that shot. This is on that same trip. Uh, this is with the Olympus 45 mil lens on, again, the Oregon coast. This is actually up a little bit further north though. Uh, I believe in a town called Lincoln City. Um, I just really like the way that, well one, the, the, the lens incredibly didn't flare with this shot. Um, and I like how, I like the colors of the sunset and I like the way that the reflection of the sun is creating this almost lightsaber-like form. This is on the same trip uh, up to Washington and this is actually in Washington in Fall City. Uh, again, we stayed in another Airbnb uh, and at, just outside this Airbnb, there was kind of strangely this old wooden picture frame just hanging from a tree. And I saw it out there and I was like, you know what? I really want to take a photo through that picture frame. So I went out there, I think this is the morning that we left, uh, and I you know, started setting up a, a shot. This is with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Uh, and it was a foggy morning, so it came out really cool. Uh, and it just so happened that during one of my frames, somebody walked through the center of the frame. Uh, and I thought that it actually made the shot a better shot. I have a number of shots without this person, um, but the one that had the person walking in it ended up being my favorite. And now this is on our way back from that trip. This is in Northern California on the 101 freeway. Um, and 101, you know, in certain parts of California is just kind of concrete jungly. Far, far north like this, it's just forest and it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. Um, it was foggy this morning, it looked awesome. And this was shot with the Olympus 25 millimeter lens, which I actually had connected to my Olympus EPM2, and I just had the EPM2 with that lens on it sitting next to me in the front seat of the car. Every once in a while, I would pull it up and take a shot just while driving, and this is one of those shots. In retrospect, I kind of wish I had stopped and actually uh, bothered to take the photo properly. Um, I would have gotten the focus a little bit better, uh, and I think the 12 mil lens actually would have worked better for this shot, because I would have gotten even more of the trees up there. But as is, I quite, quite like this shot. So this is back in Pacifica with the Olympus 38 millimeter lens. Um, I like the, the leading line of this path right here that leads to Rockaway Beach. Uh, and I was setting up the shot with the manual focus, uh, the manual focus lens, because that's what it does, it's manual focus. Um, and this person just happened to, to walk into the frame. Uh, and it's that sort of serendipitous thing that improves a photo and that, that, that I really like. Um, you know, without that person there, it's still a, a decent photo, but that having that strong subject there just makes it so much better. And now this is at Rockaway Beach. Again, I think I mentioned this path goes to Rockaway Beach. This is at that beach, not the same day or anything. Um, this is a sunset, naturally. You can tell that, I don't need to say that. This sunset um, was a particularly striking sunset, and I shot this with the Olympus 45 millimeter lens. Now it might not look like a 45 millimeter shot, and that's because it's actually a panorama that's stitched together probably five or six different frames uh, to give you that really wide angle. Um, yeah, I just really like the, the pink color that was coming through the sky, it was just unreal. The softness of the clouds and like the texture of it was, again, just kind of unreal. Um, and I, I, I was on my way back home from the farmer's market uh, on my bicycle and I, I saw the sunset and I knew I had to photograph it. So I, I basically ran across the beach 
to get this frame set up, uh, but I wasn't the only person there on the beach shooting this picture. Um, there were a bunch of people. The, the, it was that kind of sunset where just everyone stopped and was like, all right, I'm gonna take a picture of the sunset. A lot of people enjoying it together, which was cool. Um, this is my little brother skipping through the clouds. I was actually just skipping on the ground. It was normal ground. Uh, I, I was on a walk with him uh, and I was shooting some pictures of these clouds with the Olympus 45 millimeter lens. And he happened to walk uh, across the front of my frame and I just saw a silhouette and I was like, oh, that makes it a, a nice strong photo. Uh, and so I asked him, I was like, hey, walk back again across my frame. But of course he's a little brother and little brothers don't just walk, he had to skip. Uh, but it ended up making the shot just incredible. Um, if I had to do it again, what I would change is I would focus on him instead of the clouds. You know, if you zoom in on it, you can tell that he's not in focus. It's the, the cloud detail that's in focus. Um, but again, the original f shot I had in mind was that he was just going to be a dark silhouette, but it came out so strong this way that I just had to, I had to edit it with him nice and bright um, and preserve that detail. These are my chickens. We got chickens, I think in October, around October of 2014, we got two chickens. We got Rue and we got Tigger. And her name is Rue, but she's actually a hen, um, not a rooster. Yeah, that's, that's my chickens. Uh, I shot this with the Olympus 75 mil lens and this is just kind of indicative of the sort of shot you'll get with that, right? It's a nice long telephoto reach, um, a ton of detail. Why are you not zooming in? A ton of detail um, and then just that nice creamy background blur. Here's another shot with the Olympus 75 millimeter lens. Uh, this is in Pacifica, a uh, particularly beautiful sunset um, falling behind the mountain in the background and these weeds slash bushes slash I don't know what to call them these little feathery things pop up every year around September to November they kind of pop up and they start out red and then by the 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 end of, well, maybe like the beginning of fall, they start turning golden. Uh, and then in this particular shot, because the light was pointing through them, they're even more golden. Um, I mentioned this is the 75 mil lens, but it might not look like a 75 mil shot because it's another panorama. I think this is maybe three stills stitched together. Um, yeah, I really like that one. So here's another shot in Pacifica. Uh, this is with the Olympus 12 millimeter lens. Um, and it might not be totally clear, but this is actually an HDR shot. HDR stands for high dynamic range. Um, and what that means is you get detail in the dark bits, right? This is all in shadow, uh, but you also don't end up blowing out the sky, the bright bits. The way that I did this photo, so I, I took three different frames of the exact same scene, but at different exposures. And then uh, in post-processing, I think use Photoshop, you combine all those stills and you get the dynamic range from each of them. It, in this case, turned out to be one of my favorite shots of the year. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm really, really considering keeping my 12 millimeter lens. It's a snail. This was shot with the Olympus 45 mil lens, um, but it was also had the MCON PO2 macro adapter. And I'm sorry I said that. That is a terrible name. But that's what Olympus calls their macro adapter. It's just a little, bit of glass that screws onto the front of the 45 mm lens, and it lets you focus closer than you might normally be able to focus. Um, this is, you know, maybe it doesn't totally come across, but that's actually a really small snail. It was like maybe, yeah, maybe that big. Um, and with that macro adapter, I was able to get really close. Uh, the, the depth of field is super, super narrow. Um, and this is a, a case where even though I was using an autofocus lens, I really just needed manual focus. And so that's what I used. And that's how I was able to get the focus directly on the eyes of the snail. Are those eyes? I actually have no idea. I don't know anything about the anatomy of snails. So this shot is with the Olympus 75 mil lens. Um, this is a Pelican on the Pacific Pier. Um, I actually, I went out one morning to meet a buddy of mine who happened to be crab fishing out in the pier. Uh, and this pelican was just hanging out. He was just sitting on the pier, letting people walk up and take, literally taking selfies with this bird. Uh, and he didn't care. Um, this is a tall bird. I don't know, maybe like two, two and a half feet tall. Um, and he obviously did not care. He wasn't worried about people at all. 
Um, yeah, just the detail that comes through in this lens, the, the Olympus 75 mil is ridiculous. Uh, the lighting turned out quite nice in this. Um, even though it was a nice bright sunny morning, uh, it was still early enough that the light wasn't very harsh. Ah, this is my cat. You're probably used to seeing my cat if you've been watching Micromatic videos. Um, this is my wife was holding my cat and I think she was bringing my cat over to me to say sorry for something. I don't know, because my cat's a little punk sometimes, right? Most cats are. Uh, but the way that she was just kind of dangling there and looking at me, I was like, all right, I gotta take a photo. And so I pulled out my camera with whatever lens it had on it and it happened to be the Olympus 25 mil. And I shot this photo, I really liked it. Um, the focus came out nice. Uh, I like the way that her paws are kind of reaching out toward me. Um, yeah, it's just a cute photo. Another shot in Pacifica, again, with the Olympus 25 millimeter lens. Um, I just, this is a tree that I, I, I particularly like. I've tried taking pictures of it a number of times um, and it's kind of difficult because it's both tall uh, and wide, just the way that it reaches out here. Um, and so I've taken a lot of photos where it just doesn't feel quite right. And this is my favorite of the bunch. Um, I think this is also an HDR shot, which is what let me get, you know, detail in this dark bits, but the, the super bright sky, I know it's cloudy. You don't think of clouds as bright, but when the sky is just literally a wall of white clouds, it can be really, really bright. Uh, but with an HDR shot, I was able to preserve the detail in the clouds and still, still get the detail of the landscape. Uh, now this is some building in San Diego. I think it's in Balboa Park, um, but I actually wasn't in Balboa Park when I shot this picture. I was in the San Diego Zoo. Uh, we had we were in the San Diego Zoo with my nephew, uh, and we rode some air tram across the zoo. And on the air tram, I, was, I saw this building in the background. I was like, "That's so cool!" And I tried taking pictures of it from the tram, but they weren't that great. Um, but when we landed on the, the other end of the tram. I hooked up my Olympus 40 to 150 mil zoom lens uh, and I set up this shot. Um, and what might not totally come across is that this is, again, another HDR shot. Uh, this is maybe four or five different frames with the, the dynamic range combined. Um, and without that, right, if I didn't use HDR, what would have happened is either I would have gotten the detail in the building and then just a white sky, or I would have gotten the detail in the sky and just a black building. Um, because I wanted the detail and the detail here, uh, that's why HDR works out quite well. And what's especially impressive about this shot, uh, not to toot my horn, but to toot the horn of Micro Four Thirds uh, as a camera system, is that I shot this at 150 mils, 50 mil focal length, uh, a, a five bracket HDR shot, and I did not use a tripod. I just handheld it. Uh, the the built-in stabilization in the camera worked out really well. This is an, another shot at the zoo. Um, this is with the Olympus 75 mil lens. Um, I took a number of pictures of the animals. The 75 mil ended up being like the perfect lens for this zoo. Um, just, I, I grabbed a lot of shots that I liked. Uh, this was my favorite. Uh, I liked the composition. I liked the way that the tree branches were in the front and the tree branches almost kind of mimic the curves of this antlered animal's antlers. Uh, I couldn't tell you what kind of animal it is. Um, and then just the detail that comes through with this lens is ridiculous. The, the bright green color, um, it was still, you know, this is the same day. You can see it was an overcast morning. Uh, and so the light was just really, really nice. And this is my last favorite shot of the year. This is uh, at the same trip, the San Diego Zoo. This is my nephew. You've seen him in pictures before, uh, but here he is dressed as Captain America, uh, but he's being, he's being terrorized by, by a polar bear. Um, this is with the Olympus 12 millimeter lens. Uh, and again, this is the kind of shot that if you don't have a wide angle, it's really hard to get this shot. Um, the, they had this big polar bear statue, which was probably, I don't know, 12, 15 feet tall. It's really tall. Um, maybe 15 feet over overstating it. I'm going to say between 10 and 12 feet tall. Uh, and I thought it'd be funny if my nephew stood in front of it, like he was being chased and he, he had no problem hamming it up for the camera. So that's it. That's my top 50 favorite photos of 2014. A special shout out to the Olympus Pen F 38 millimeter lens for being my favorite lens of the year. If you want to see more photos taken with this lens and other lenses on Micro Four Thirds cameras, follow me on Instagram. I've got a link somewhere around here. I'll fit it. 
Um, and you can also follow me on Flickr if that's more your speed. Uh, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Micromatic. You've seen my favorite photos of the year. Now I want to see yours. Leave a comment with a link to your favorite photo from 2014 and I'll check it out.